Hey everybody, MKRC Builds here, working on a new project. I had a problem with my Saints Mark Jinmitsu 3020 router. Had a problem with the lead screw. The lead screw nuts came apart, separated, and hence made the machine not function anymore, basically. So, this is the original lead screw from the machine. I have a new one in there now. This lead screw nut on this side, this half, used to have a couple of tabs that would fit into the slots on this half. Well, something was awry in the machine because I got an excessive amount of wear on these nuts. You can see how loose that is, and you can see, perhaps you can see how much backlash there is on them. What would happen is, this one somehow got worn enough that it rotated more than this one did with the lead screw, and it actually separated the tabs from the little slots and it became unscrewed to where it was like way out here somewhere sticking out the side of the machine up here so I put it back together ran it a few times by hand with the hand screw knob and it separated again well that indicated that I had a huge problem that I had to take care of so I took it apart and I used the lathe, my mini lathe, to turn this piece down because this nut has four different mounting holes. It utilizes two of them to secure the lead nut to the carriage for the spindle. And this side was too big to fit between the holes on the opposite side of the carriage. So I milled it down a little bit so it fit between the holes, milled off those two tabs, adjusted this in to where I had no backlash, and then put a couple of set screws into the side of the carriage to hold this in place. That worked for about 10 minutes until there was so much tension against this that it was actually pulling the set screws out of the carriage. It was going to actually just strip it out. So I stopped, and I remembered that I had another lead screw and nut from a previous project. So I got it out, and I measured it up, and I cut it off to the length it needed to be. I wouldn't have had to cut this little 5-inch piece off, but I decided to cut it off. didn't want my knob sticking way out past the end of the machine. So <clears throat> after I put it together... I knew that I was going to have a problem because the pitch on the threads on this lead screw are about double the pitch on the threads of the original lead screw, which meant that when I tell the machine to move 50 millimeters, for example, that lead screw is going to turn in the amount that it expects to move the carriage 50 millimeters, but it's actually going to move about 100 because this is double the pitch that that one is. So I knew I was going to have to adjust the travel settings in the software. Credit where credit is due. James Dean has a tutorial on just this topic on his channel. And James Dean Designs is the name of the channel. Really good tutorial videos, really good explanation of how to do things where to look for problems, what software to use, what bits to use, all kinds of stuff. Just overall, top-notch, very well explained, very definitive. Just can't say enough good about his channel and his method of, of teaching with his tutorials. Fantastic videos he makes. If you're not familiar with him, I suggest you look him up. 
he's on YouTube and I think Instagram and Facebook and he's got a Facebook group uh, for beginner CNC's and it, it it's just a, a plethora of good information anyway knowing that I'm gonna have to adjust this I'm gonna step over to the computer now and show you what I got going on over there in James's tutorial he talks about finding your code information and it's all listed here all you do to get it is type dollar sign dollar sign and hit enter in the status bar and it'll bring up your information your travel code information is right here number 100 is the X number 101 is the Y as you can see and number 102 is the Z axis travel that's resolutions or steps per millimeter of travel so what we're going to be working on is the X axis my other two axes are are in pretty good shape they're pretty close but I'm going to use his formula and his method for calculating what I need to calibrate this to so that I actually get the desired travel from the desired setting. So the first thing I'm going to do is home the machine. <coughs> Take care of that. Then I'm going to use the jog controller and I'm going to move everything down into this stretch of blue tape. And this is this is from James's suggestion. Now I'm going to just give you a quick demonstration. I'm going to tell the tell the machine right now to move 50 millimeters and hit enter on that. And then I'm going to hit the X minus to make the carriage travel to the left 50 millimeters. And you will see that it goes way more than 50 millimeters. So here we go. We're going to turn it loose and let it ride. Right there is about 50. And it stopped at about almost 100 millimeters of travel about 85 or so full travel from home so that's not gonna work I'm gonna move in another what it thinks 50 so that I have some room to work on my blue tape marking down there then I'm gonna bring the spindle down with the z-axis to just above the the work table surface right about there for now move this stuff out of the way it doesn't need to be there anymore and let's bring this up just a little bit oh I didn't want it to go 50 I forgot to change that number now it's gonna go a long ways and I'll have to bring it back that's alright we can handle that we'll just bring it right back where it was and then I'll change this number to like 5 instead of 50 and bring it just inside the edge now I'm going to change my Z down to about one and bring it down real slow till it's just about to contact right there I'm going to bring it down one more and make a dimple didn't really need to do that huh. but that's going to be my reference point right there now I'm going to move it up four and I'm going to move it to the right five just to remove any possibility of backlash in my new lead screw now I'm going to make another dimple in the tape and I'm going to mark that spot with a marker to make it a little easier to find later because these things are so small they're hard to see and now I'm going to pick it back up and I'm going to tell it to move uh, let's go whoops wrong one let's go 
75 millimeters and tell it to travel 75 millimeters to the right. That's what we want it to do. It's clearly going to travel further than that, probably about double, probably about 150 millimeters. I hope there's enough room in the carriage for it to accomplish that. Yep, there we go. Okay, now I'm going to bring the Z back down and make me another dimple in the tape. And then I'm going to mark that one right there so I can find it. Now the next thing to do is raise it back up out of the way. And I'm going to slide the carriage forward so that I can get my calipers on those dimples. And now I'm going to put my caliper on it and see how far it actually traveled. Okay, coming in with the caliper. And it's zeroed and zeroed push tight, zero millimeters. Now I'm going to measure... The distance on these two dimples and I'm gonna put the tip of there in there I'm gonna find this one with the tip it's kind of hard to see so you might even have to feel around to find it once you get to it right there and that's showing 148 millimeters, 148.79. And we asked it to move 75, so that's almost double. So now it's time to do some math. We're going to take the graphic that James provided, current steps per millimeter, times the expected travel divided by the actual travel. So the current steps is set at, let's go see what that is, dollar sign, dollar sign, enter. For number 100, it's currently set at 800. So what we want to do is take our calculator and type in 800 times 75, we wanted it to move 75 millimeters, equals 60,000. Now we're going to divide that by the actual number that we had, which I believe was 148.79. If that wasn't correct, I'm going to run this again, just to make sure we get the right thing. So our setting, instead of 800, should be 403.252. So I'm going to come back into OGS and I'm going to type dollar sign 100 space equals space 403.252 403.252 and hit enter. Now, just to confirm that the changes took took in the software. I'll get this again. Now you can see my number 100 equals 403.252. Now I'm going to take the machine and return it back to roughly where I started from. And uh, it's moving. It's actually moving about the right distance now. It moved about 75 millimeters that time. It didn't actually go back to where I started from. And let's change this down to about 50. And ask it to move again. Kind of get it a little bit further down there. That's pretty good. We're going to bring it forward over the workpiece. Somewhere about there ought to be fine. I'm going to move it 10 millimeters back to the right just to remove any possibility of backlash. <laughs> Excuse me, backlash. 
I know there isn't any because that carriage is extremely tight and I'll demonstrate that in a moment. But now I'm going to go ahead and drop my Z back down four millimeters. And I'm going to make a new dimple in the tape. I'm going to make a new mark for where that dimple is. I'm going to raise it back up. Now this time I'm going to ask it to move 100 millimeters. Enter. And I'm going to say move it to the right 100 millimeters. Because the longer travel you can adjust for, the better off you are. Just to me that makes sense. So once it reaches the 100 millimeter travel point that it thinks it's traveling 100 millimeters, we're going to make another dimple and measure it and see how close it really is. So there's another dimple. Let's make another mark. Like so. And raise it up. And then move the work piece forward away from the spindle so that we can get a reading with the caliper. Again, we're still at zero. We're going to find our little dimple right here with that end. There it is. I'm going to find it with this end. There it is. Set in the dimples 99.18 millimeters. That's pretty close, but I think we can get a little closer. 99.18. Let's not forget that number. So we come back over here to our example and our calculator. It's currently set at, uh, what's the current setting? Let's type in dollar dollar, enter, and why aren't we getting what we want here? Dollar dollar, enter. Oh, we are. I just had to scroll down. Okay, 403. 0.252. So come up here to our system. Current steps per millimeter. Four o three point two five two times the expected travel, which was 100, equals 40,352, divided by 99.18, equals 406,586. So now we'll go back in and make another change. Dollar sign 100 equals... 406586. 406.586. Enter. We'll take another reading on the system, and now it says 406.586. So we're going to ask it to travel back now. Another back 100 millimeters. We're going to keep that number in there now. For the time being. I'm going to move the carriage back forward over the work. We're going to set this to 10. Ask it to move, take out any backlash that might be there. Now we're going to ask it to move 100.
we're going to make a dimple before we move it right there we're going to mark that like so pick it up and move it 100 or ask it to move 100 after it moves we'll measure it and see how far it actually moved and if we have to make another adjustment in the code we will but I want to get that as close to 100 millimeters on the x-axis as I can for the most accurate cuts and layouts when I do my little projects so I'll drop it down and make another dimple make another mark like so raise it up move the work surface out of the way where we can get to it and take another measurement sometimes you have to repeat this process a couple times but it's better to do it more than once and get it right than have it be off in my opinion so we'll get our mark over here and I find the little dimple right there having trouble finding it this time Hmm. Part of the problem is I don't have enough light to see real well. Well, let's do another one. And I'm going to change my plunge to five millimeters just to give me a little bit better set up so I'm going to move back a hundred I'm going to move it over here just a little bit to get it out of the way and that will also eliminate the the uh, backlash if there is any. Now I'm going to plunge it down five millimeters, make a good little mark and raise it up. Let's mark that even though it's a better mark. Let's go ahead and mark where it is. Raise it up. Now we're going to ask it to move 100 millimeters and go. On the plunge setting I had before, it was barely coming into the tape and wood, so I wasn't getting a very good mark on it. Okay. It thinks it moved 100 millimeters. Let's make another plunge. Make another pen mark here. And raise it up. And move it out of the way. And let's try to get our caliper on it now and see what we get. Come back over here to the caliper. Turn it on. Make sure it's at zero. Oh yeah, definitely find it that time. Now get this one. Or this one. Maybe I got to get the right mark here. There it is.
and there it is right there I felt it drop in the notch 101.15 so I overdid it quite a bit actually so we'll come back over here to the math we'll pull up our example we'll pull up our calculator and we want 406.586 406.586 times 100 expected travel equals, and we're going to divide that by 101.15 equals. Big difference, 401.963. So we'll come back over to the software, type dollar sign, 401, whoops, 100 equals 401.963, and hit enter, and now we're going to hit dollar sign again twice and pull the reading back up 401.963 that's what we want according to the calculator so let's move this thing back over the work surface and I hope we got it right this time let's move it to about oh I don't want it to go that far that so we can control how far it moves we're going to come in right about that angle and we're going to move it down a ways sorry this video has turned out to be so long but with my missed calculations the first couple times that's what happens James nailed it the first time on his so he's he's a pro I'm a rookie and I don't mind being a rookie. So I'm going to move it back the other way now just to eliminate any possibility of backlash. I'm going to do my plunge. Nice good hole there. I'm going to mark that. And then I'm going to raise it up. And I'm going to ask it to move 100 millimeters again. And send it on its way. And now we'll see what we really get with this measurement. Hopefully, it'll be spot on or very close to an actual 100 millimeter reading. There it is. Plunge it down. Make a mark. And trust me, if you don't have a lot of light to work with, you may want to use a different color marker or something uh, let's move the work surface out of the way a little bit so we can get the caliper to it all right let's give that a go and see what we end up with last time we had 101.14 or something whatever it was we're at zero I'm gonna start over get it in that mark there and get it in that mark there there it is I felt it drop in 99.99 that's within one hundredth of a millimeter right tenths hundredths thousandths that's within one hundredth of a millimeter I'm gonna call that Spot on the money, good enough for the girls I go with. And that, again, huge shout out to James Dean Designs. There will be a link for his channel in the description of this video. Awesome tutorial guy. Really well explains everything. Um, 
He does he does a fantastic job. Can't can't speak highly enough of him. So check his videos out. I'm sure he'll have a tip or a trick that you can use. And just to double check this, I'm gonna type dollar sign, dollar sign, go back in, and now my x-axis travel setting for this lead screw is 401.963 instead of 800 like the others the others are pretty close so i'm not going to worry about them right now and this video is getting way too long so thank you so much for watching i hope this helps check out james dean's designs